I just love watching watching you perform um, at these weddings. So firstly, could you tell us what um, the meaning of alaga is? I know it's a Yoruba language and I know what it is, but for the audience, could you tell us what an alaga, you know, what, what the meaning really is? All right, good evening everyone. My name is Olua Busola Hatems and AKA um, Duchess of Alaga, you know, the fabulous, anyone you feel like calling. Me. I want to acknowledge yes. everyone that has joined from my platform. I appreciate you. Um, thank you for allowing me to join your platform to educate people. God bless you. Uh, Alaga uh, is like an officiant for Nigerian wedding, like a traditional um, master of ceremony, a wedding compare for a Nigerian wedding and well, you're about to be precise because we have three tribes in Nigeria. No, over 250 tribes in Nigeria. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, the prominent ones are Yoruba, Aousa, and Hebrew. And Alaga is mainly for the Yoruba part that are pronounced. I'm sure everyone has actually used that as well. Um, I know the Ghanaians, they use um, a chema or something for the Alaga, but Alaga is the one for Yoruba weddings. What is your what are your duties? What does an Alaga do, particularly at a Yoruba wedding? Because we are talking Nigerian etiquette, yeah. but wedding etiquette, sorry, but we also want to focus on this particular live on Yoruba weddings. Okay. Okay. For a Yoruba wedding, for the Alaga part, we have the um, I'm sure most people don't know, mostly the brides and maybe the grooms, they don't know that there's two parts in this alaga. We have the alaga ijoko and the alaga iduro. Alaga ijoko, that's the sitting bride, the sitting MC represents okay. the, the bride's family. And yeah. alaga iduro is the standing MC representing the groom's family. And both of them, they come together to actually host the traditional wedding ceremony. There's always banter between the two alagas. What we do basically is to entertain the guests and also to educate them about the culture and talk them or take them through through a process. I would do the traditional weddings in Yoruba culture. And uh -huh. the alagas are there to actually entertain the family, entertain the guests, carry them along. <laughs> Someone <laughs> says the alagas collect DJ's microphone. I actually take my microphone to the events. I know you do. I know you do. Perhaps that's a tip for the other alagas to take their own microphone. Yes, yes. I am. Because sometimes the, the DJs, they are reluctant to give us their microphone. So that's basically what we do to actually bring two families together to host the event. Just like we have the, um, the Western wedding compare. Mm -hmm. I just think the alagas, we do more than the, the traditional wedding compare. We do more than the Western one. I, I know I stand to be corrected, but that's what I think we do. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for explaining explaining that for those particularly who are not of the Yoruba or Nigerian culture who don't understand um, exactly what Analaga does. So could you please share some etiquette around nigerian traditional weddings whether it's relating to the bright side of the family or the groom side just you know for other cultures especially people from other cultures who don't really know a lot about the the uh, culture or the etiquette surrounding um nigerian traditional weddings mm, that's that's an interesting question that's the some of the etiquettes to expect in the yoruba traditional wedding i would first of all say um respect and greetings when you go to okay. your traditional weddings uh you will see you, you can't just call people by their names all those aunties and uncles you can't just mention their <laughs> names because it's a, like you have to respect them uncle auntie mommy daddy that's respect is one of the first etiquettes that you have to actually expect okay. in traditional wedding may i just May I just add to that, um, for those who are, who are not aware of the Yoruba culture, it, they don't have to be blood relatives to be called auntie or uncle. <laughs> yes. yes, you don't have to. Yes. As, as long as you can envisage that this person is older than you are, definitely yes. just accord some respect to them. And um, greetings. Greetings is another etiquette. Like, 
when the families of the groom when they come into the bride's family they right. have to actually acknowledge them they have to pay homage they have to greet them to as a sign of like oh we are extremely pleasantry we are greeting you we're respecting you uh -huh. for coming into your house that has to take place so okay the, the two things is another etiquette that needs to take place in the yoruba traditional wedding and there's another one when you prostrate that's something yes. again we do in um nigerian traditional wedding when the the male uh, let's let's go to the groom the groom would yes. definitely prostrate to the bride's family to ask for their daughters and in marriage and as a form of respect as well that is not standing on their head to ask for their daughters and in marriage <laughs> It's actually proven to ask for their daughters and in marriage. I think those are the few ones that I can think of at the moment. Please, if you have any other one, kindly put it in the comment section. It gets to expect in Nigerian or Yoruba traditional weddings. I think okay. those are the few ones can actually. Thank, thank you for that. So greetings and introduction, introducing yourself is very important. And if I remember correctly, because some of the younger people, they, they prosper. Um, prostrate in the which in Yoruba is called the dobale. A lot of the young people they call it push ups, doing push ups. <laughs> I know some of the young people tend to call it push ups when, when they have to go flat on you know flat on their, their tummy, but I know that respect is, is a big big thing in, in the Yoruba culture. So you don't want to mess mess up there, especially in front of the, the in laws. So thank thank you for thank you for sharing that. So in terms of the etiquette around um, Nigerian traditional weddings as well. So the groom arrives. Um, you have to greet everybody, which is making a good first impression. That is very important. What other things happens? What what other things do happen in terms of etiquette around that traditional ceremony? Do they bring gifts? Do they are there essential things that must be done? Oh. Or, or particularly in relation to either family, you know, what the bride's family need to do, what the groom's family need to do. Can you just share a couple of things around yes, around definitely. that? Um, for the groom side, in Yoruba traditional wedding, they, let's start from the top. They have to bring a letter, like a proposal letter, oh. asking for a wow. bride and in marriage. So okay. that, like, when you're asking us that you want to marry our daughter, you need to put it in writing. So. That is something that is very, very common with the Yoruba traditional wedding. They put it in writing, the right letters. And nowadays, our letters are, in fact, so unique now. You know, in the past, <laughs> it used to be like a scroll, but now it's no longer a scroll. Some people still use the scroll, but we have like, okay. letters. It, we it have is very, very elegant and very, very beautiful. I can imagine. <laughs> the right letter to marry the daughter. And in response to that, they give an acceptance letter, like we have accepted that you can marry a mm -hmm. woman. So there's an exchange of letter when it comes to Yoruba traditional wedding. Some tribes don't do it, but for Yoruba one, this is very an important it's etiquette. In important. Yes. Okay. And after, um, yes, ma. So would you would you say that's an influence from the Western culture? No, it's. It's always been a, um, a, a Yoruba traditional wedding. It's always, okay. the letter has always been a thing that we do. So when you come to ask for the daughters and in marriage, you have to put it in writing. So it's not really as, it has hardly been um, a Western one. It has always just that now, it's now more advanced and elegant. Now we put it in okay. frame. But initially, that is always maybe in scroll or something, but there needs to be okay. formal writing. That you are asking for our daughters and in marriage. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much for 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 those. So going on into this traditional ceremony, just give an uh, um, you know a short example of how the day goes, how the, the whole ceremony goes in in, in a nutshell. Yes. What people can expect, because so, some of us know because we've wit witnessed it, but there may, may be people on the line that perhaps they've never attended one. And, you know, I love, love, love um, learning about other cultures, um, regardless of which country, I love learning about other cultures. So I'm hoping that other people who may not know what goes on will get a glimpse of what a typical um, Yoruba traditional wedding involves. A typical Yoruba traditional wedding. Um, 
the bride family, they come in, the groom's family knocks on the door to come into the bride's family's compound. After that, there's a brief prayer to open the ceremony. After that, we have in the introduction of the, the parents of the, um, the couple. After that, the exchange of letters. Then after we've exchanged the letters, we meet the groom, we see the groom. After the groom has made his entrance, we'll do something called drilling, like asking the groom, like, <laughs> He can marry our daughter, testing his capabilities, basically. Just like fun, like a, a culture, thing, like just testing him. And after to see if he's physically fit. <laughs> physically <laughs> fit. We say physically fit, spiritually fit, financially fit. fit. Yes. Those are the uh, capabilities that would So he has to bring out some money. Oh, obviously. <laughs> you sure that money to marry our daughter. This is a culture we've seen. And with him yes, yes. So long that I've <laughs> and apart from it being a cultural thing, it creates fun in the atmosphere. It gives like vibes in the atmosphere. They enjoy it. We, the Alagas, as well, we also enjoy it as well. So after he's made his entrance, he takes pictures with the family, greets some family as well. Then the, the bride comes in. The bride comes into a family first. So, okay, I can see some people make we'll come back to those comments anyway the bride, uh, I know. <laughs> the bride goes to a family first and actually um to get prayers and we pray for her we send her forth to our healer's house so the other like i remember initially i explained that it's an alaga juro um, yes take on that role so we i hand over the alaga i could i could be an alaga joko and i could be an ijuro the alaga joko wow so sometimes you do both you can do both but if you have been um, employed to do both, we actually yes. can do both. We can do two in one. But right. if you haven't been employed to do both, you have to give the other alaga the chance to actually um, express yourself in a role as an ijuro. You okay. can't take over okay. both sides. If you have just right. been employed for the ijoko, which is the sitting one to represent the bride's family, the bride's you have to family, yes, yes. do what that the bride family has employed you for then the alaga iduro you allow her like handing over the bride to the alaga iduro that is her duty she's been employed for that role oh. not the alaga iduro okay. crossing over to take the bride to that family no oh, okay iduro has been employed which is the standing one to do that mm -hmm. you hand her over to that she takes the alaga uh, the bride to the groom's family then the unveil her the welcomer okay. the family so after welcoming her into the family, she dances with them. She takes picture with them. After taking picture with them, then she, she goes back to the Alaga Ijoko, where they go to the bridal gifts. You know, there's something called bridal gift in the Yoruba traditional wedding area. Well, that's what it's called. And this right. is the gift that they bring to come and marry the the the, the bride. So we we proceed to that. We'll pray with it. So the, sorry, these are in form of gifts. In form of gifts. So it's, right. Things. we have listed i think um if there is time i could explain further on that later on in this show. okay so we proceed to the to the gift table gift table and she picks an item which is would expect her to pick a bible um uh, yoruba don't forget we have religion we have the christian religion and yes. the muslim yes i've been fortunate enough to actually host the muslim weddings as well because i would say um it's a business for me in as much as the ministry as well but i'm I, I can officiate in both areas a muslim wedding and a christian wedding so i wouldn't just say pick a bible i can say if it's a muslim wedding she needs to pick a quran the quran and, yes and then she dances with it and it's time to meet her husband now you know all this world that we're taking out from the bride's family to the groom's family she hasn't met her husband so after <laughs> after this time to meet your husband then you meet your husband you greet your husband you, you they pray with each other, we cut the cake, and we do the official handing over. And the Yoruba culture, to be precise, we don't hand over the bride to the groom alone. We hand over the bride to every member of the groom's family. Like exactly. Our, yeah. Take care of her and everything. So it's like all of them are responsible for that bride, not only the groom. Yes. So when the groom is misbehaving, they, they tell him, well, we are all responsible for this bride. For, for this bride, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Abitos is mentioning something. Gifts like Bible, yeah. Yam, tea, sugar, salt, honey, suitcase, letters, etc. These are the area was that will bring. In as much as nowadays they've modernized it, but it's yes. the area that will bring 
So everyone um, is responsible for the, and especially the parent, thank you everyone for joining. I appreciate you that they're responsible <laughs> for the, for the bride. So after the handing over, I think that's the last part of it to hand over the bride. And somebody mentioned okay. about dowry earlier, and I don't know if we yes, somebody did mention um, about dowry. Um, can you explain? Because I, I do, I am aware that it still goes on yes. within, you know, in yes. terms of and the I, traditional I wedding. So can you to comment on this dowry part? But personally, for me, the dowry part is um, personal to each family. But right. I would like to mention, when it comes to diary, there not only diary, apart from the area, well, there are some envelopes that are requested. Envelopes, yes. um, um, father's consent, mother's consent. Consent, and yes. And that uh, in that envelope as well, there's also something called diary. Diary is a bright price. The Yoruba call it Owori Ijawo. So the uh -huh. bright price now is now down to each family. No, we come for, from different charts. But I've noticed, and um, one of the younger ones that are changing the stereotypes, like the oh, Yoruba okay. culture, they return their diary, which we are yes. the elders have come together as well to say now that diary is not meant to be returned because it is okay. talking to the parents saying that we are appreciated for looking after your girl, for giving us your daughter. Other cultures, they don't return the dowry. Igbo culture, Sierra Leonean, Congolese, God, they don't return the dowry. They don't return. Now, okay. Left to the parents of the bride. Do you want to actually keep it or give the couple as a seed into their marriage? But uh, biblically as well, it's been established that you can keep it because when Abraham sent Eliezer to go and look for a wife for Isaac, uh -huh. Isaac returned the dowry. Isaac paid that dowry to that family and they actually got uh, Rebecca. Was it Rebecca? the got for the for Isaac. So biblically it's been established as well. So okay, someone is correcting me. Yorubas don't do dowry. That they, is, do they do bride price. Mm. Okay, I would have thought dowry and bride price is the same thing. Oh, worry, yeah, well, yes, yes, they probably me. are similar. Okay. okay <laughs> said me now. Um, can, okay. can you tell us the difference between dowry and bride price? I would love to know please so um, <laughs> well so, we're all learning we're all learning today <laughs> yeah nobody can pay amount you have used to train your daughter it's an that's the main thing it's it an is. Is gift yeah. to say thank you yes. for looking after your daughter and your has got it wrong for a long time saying ah ta, uh, more while. we're not selling our our child they do yes that's that's not it's a, a token yes There's it's a token to the family can even pay for that daughter but it's that family the groom's family saying thank you Yes, right family as a token of the appreciation. Wonderful. Okay. 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 So okay. one question while she was says the Igbo people. Oh yes, the Igbo people do dowry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes, they do. Yes. The same thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So moving on, there's something you mentioned, um, which is one question I also want to ask where you said they cut the cake. Now, I, I know in Yoruba, they, um, I've forgotten Akaro Igbo or something like that, they call it. Now, which is the cake? And obviously that is a Western influence because I would want to think way back, probably that, that didn't happen. Can you clarify that? That that is something that has influenced the traditional wedding. Um, I don't know how far back I, I i'm not sure I, I'm, I'm young in this business but i will leave it to my elders to answer the <laughs> custom of cake it's always been dakaro Ibo. that's why it's called in yoruba culture which is, which is why it's called that yeah. because it's dakaro not Ibo. yeah but yes. we have always had it in the past but i don't know mm. if it's something that it has influenced but uh, it's been influenced by the western culture I need you to know actually if it's something okay. that we, we actually imbibe from the Western world. But I, uh, from my side, I've always known that it's always got cake for a long time. But okay. because uh, as an English thing, you would have thought that maybe we actually took that from the English culture. Okay. Okay. Well, that that's something we can we can always look into. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Thank you so much for explaining what what normally happens. And um, I guess after the ceremony, um, what do the families do once they once that ceremony? What what happens after that? So after that is just party party. They have live okay. bands, DJ. Okay. So okay. 
it's because so there, there's some form of um, eating and, and, oh, and entertain yes. and entertainment. Yes, for okay. every Yoruba traditional wedding, let's say, not only traditional wedding, let's say Yoruba party, there's always, <laughs> you look forward to the food and music. And <laughs> that one, they can't take it from Nigerian weddings. And I should be, I should be as well something that they do in Nigerian weddings as well. So can you explain what that, what I should be is? Okay, please. I'll explain what I should be. <laughs> Like uh, like uh, Ashabi is like uh, I would like for it like um, an attire that they can choose for families or friends so that they can actually come together and uh, make the occasion colorful. So sometimes the, the you see families, you see friends putting on the Ashabi for the alagas. They always give us um the head head tie, which clearly not mm -hmm. always anyway. If you don't have it, we match the color. But it's something okay. to represent your family. They give us like. To make it colorful and to make it nice so the bridesmaid can go in a shabby the groomsmen can go in a shabby same as the family um so they do that a shabby with common with the yoruba culture okay so put simply it's a, a uniform that everybody wears a, a, a material or, or that's chosen yes. and it's the same color the same type of, and everybody can can um, buy this and then whatever styles they want to sew everybody but basically everybody's wearing the same material but that, that's what we mean not, by it's not, it's not really compulsory for example people on this platform some of them might be thinking about i don't want to buy anything i don't want to wear you can come in whatever you want whatever you want your presence but some people want. would choose to to buy it yeah yeah okay, okay. great so uh we're going to try and round off um round up what advice would you, based on your experience, what advice would you give brides and grooms and their families when it comes to um, Nigerian weddings or particularly the Yoruba traditional weddings? What advice would you give to, to people? I know I've seen you sometimes and, and things you've talked about, so it would be great because there might be people planning um, their weddings, people um, hoping to get married, and maybe just things to make the day go smoothly for okay. everybody. Before I answer that question, I want to go back to some of the things that we have taken from the Western world. And um, in the Yoruba culture in the past, the parents are the ones that do decide the what's it called they decide if you're gonna be the date you're gonna be getting married or something but nowadays most of the young ones they're the ones that make the decision and not yes. only making the decision you find out that they all actually decide the dates the all that they will be choosing actually decides the dates that they will be getting married and in the past as well we used to see <laughs> the traditional way to correct me family that are online Traditional wedding is always done in the bride's father's house in the past. It, but nowadays, it used to be, yes. It used to be, yeah. But I, nowadays, I, I, I mean, when I was growing up, that's what I remember as well. Yeah. It used to be done in the in the bride's um, father's house. But now, traditional wedding has been taken to the hall. I think with the Western world, it's because uh, your neighbor, you can't be having all this noise and everything. Yeah. In the, you know how the yes. London houses or like our blood houses are? They are too close to each other and everything. So I guess that's the reason why you can't um, actually have those happening and everything. So that one, they have, um, Western world has influenced us on that. One of the things they have, they have taken from the Western world as well, they, the bridal list, the area war. In the past, it used to be a lot of things. And I'm sure people would agree to that as well. Yeah, uh, yes, Abitos said this. I was, I was going to mention it. And the Alagas used to be family members. <laughs> and you, you're right, Abitos. It used to be family. Okay. Like aunties in a family. Uh, but I guess with time, evolution, they decided that we are, we, 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 some people like us, we are now professional in the craft. In the sense that we do it, we, we learn the, um, uh, the, the tribal song, the cultural song, we learn the process. And we can do it professionally on like an auntie that they can employ. Our auntie can't even like doesn't know the process, but just to represent the yes. family. But nowadays we now actually do it more professionally. Hence the reason why we have the Alagas, Alaga Iduro and Ijoko. And um uh, that that was very, very important. Which, which is which is fantastic because I, I love I love seeing seeing you in action. <laughs> and, and and nowadays if we find some of the aunties. If I, if 
for example, if I'm a professional and I see one of the aunties representing the family, not to talk down on the fam uh, on the family of the aunties, you find that she doesn't really know what she's doing. And what she what the process is, yes. The process is, and because of that, we we start going back and forth and everything. But so it, it would be nice to hire a professional to actually do that. Yes. And sometimes they'll be like, ah, I, that comes to the pricing as well. They'll be like, when they are, are booking us, ah, Shebi is just to sing. Shebi is just to dance. Uh, I'll tell my auntie to do it. it, it it's, it's not as so simple as that. <laughs> bride and groom on this platform, not only just to sing, not only just to, there are processes involved in all those things. There are things that are like etiquette, there are things that you need to follow in all those things. Don't just assume your auntie or someone, uh, let me bust your bubble again. We have male um, alagas yes. in the industry now. And in the past, it used to be just female. Correct? Female, yes. 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 Just female. But now we have male alagas. And they're thriving. They're doing well. When I see them, um, I, I've seen one in the UK. But when I see them in Nigeria, I give kudos to them. They're thriving. They're doing well. But initially, it used to be just um, the women doing the Okay. Alagas. Thank you. Etiquette, training, so many things involved. So you just, just add, assume your auntie, because you don't want to pay an alaga or a professional to do it, <laughs> you'll bring your auntie to eat and everything, uh, and, and, and God help us. Another thing, the right <laughs> gifts. In the past, they will bring so many things. I can say the young generation now, they are enjoying their, their list are uh, uh, elaborate or extravagant. <laughs> I've seen a couple where the bride says she does it, and I'll tell you the reason. In the past, they used to give us our parents Pyrex, Ankara, some of those China where they're still mm -hmm. they're under their bed collecting dust that they don't even use. Nowadays, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Nowadays, we modernize it. That okay, that the things that are meant to be in the area, room, the things that the families can use and the bride can use as well. Sometimes they will give 2023. 20, the bride doesn't want to wear Ankara or any other thing or shoe and bag. So now it's been tailored to what the bride would need or what, what she, she really needs. Yeah. Okay. For example, one of my friends only want books. And they put books in her box. Another bride says she wants something from um, suffrages or arrows. And the groom bought it. It's something she will use. Fantastic. <laughs> well, I, I, I guess they're being oh, practical. No, that don't, don't give me things that I won't use. Yeah. So nowadays, I think we took that. The Western world has influenced that. We now give them the things, apart from the yam, edge of song, which are yes. composed cultural things. We now give the bride the things that she can use, not what they will put and be collecting those or what somebody else will use on her behalf. No, that's that one we have changed that and it's more um it's more for the bride to use. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so so much for um, enlightening us to enlightening us today. So if people want to know more or, or maybe we've got brides and grooms that might want to use you. Um and I, I did say also you, you you gave some advice to make sure the day actually I know you covered some of it already, just a couple of things in terms of making sure that the day goes well the first thing as an etiquette coach that i would mention has got to be timekeeping keeping to time but other than that what else i don't know what else would you add now that timekeeping i know when the alagas come together with one voice i think that timekeeping might work for now it's not working but i would advise okay. families and parents please kindly um keep to time and another thing I would advise the family, delegate, not on that day. Delegation, you know, it goes a long way. I, I, I would like you to delegate. I don't want people coming to me, the bride's mom or the bride's dad or the groom's mom, that, where is this, where is that? Before the day, delegate. Bright, if there are brides on this platform, don't sew your clothes tight. Because on the day, there's so many pressure. When they're trying to pull the zip, it just rips off. That's because everyone, everywhere is tense and everything. So please try give allowance or give room for your attire so that we don't have this kind of accident happening on the day. Leave enough room to get to the hall. Don't rush to the hall uh, because of driving and everything. So please, I, I would advise, uh, yeah, those are the advice I would give. If there is any, any, yes, someone said it's not nice for them to keep us waiting. Uh, and someone said so many zip. That one is the most common one. And also, From, one thing I want to sorry, say, carry on. One thing I want to say, bride and maybe groom, I'm not sure. Please don't fast on the day. 
if you're gonna go on 40 days and 40 nights fasting before the day please go on 40 days and 40 nights before the day but when it comes to your wedding day we don't want to stay dehydrated because you're dancing there's veil all over you we've had so many issues that the the the, the bride is gasping for hair and everything so you need to oh, wow. stay dehydrated don't fast some brides will tell you that they are fast and they're about to faint we have to start looking for coke to give them please do a oh, yeah. prayer before the day please i'm begging you and everything when it comes to the day god has gone ahead of you You're a believer god has gone ahead of you to make the day like smooth enjoy your day that's another thing have the best of the day because you don't pray to do it twice you only want to do it once Amen. in your life Amen. Yes. so that's the prayer now that's the prayer for we are lager so we want you to look back and say i enjoyed my day when i look back on my day that's that's one of the things i would like the couple acts to take on board as well someone said please why okay. would they want to fast on their wedding day they want to fast on their wedding because they don't want the village people to get <laughs> them on their wedding day but, <laughs> on the most serious thank you, yeah, thank that's you the so much mommy and your last day they need energy yes they need every energy they need on that they not to be lukewarm and i always say the vibe they give the energy they give is what your guests will feed on if you give a dull attitude or a dull energy your guests the feed on that energy if you give a lively energy your guests will feed on a lively we want the atmosphere charged so you so that, that's need a joyous a joyous and happy Please. and energetic bride yes yes oh. i need that i need that okay Thank you so much for, for those tips for brides and families and grooms. One, one thing I want to add to that is actually, and I've seen it quite a bit, particularly some of the, the wedding um, traditional wedding posts that you have posted and other people. And one question that I don't understand from an etiquette perspective is that you don't wear a pair of sunglasses indoors. So why do so many grooms dance into the hall? with shades on um okay my i mean apart from if you have an eye infection or there's something wrong i think it's a what the, is the 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 most of the grooms they, some of them would have advice that are very shy very very shy and they can't look into the crowd and and because of that they tend to put on that sunshade just to actually cover themselves so that they don't see people like all eyes on them and everything and it's i think it's mainly about the groom being shy and what i'd advise them if as soon as they come in um into the event after some pictures i would ask them to take it off because you don't want to look yes. through all your pictures and see that you have the sun shades on all true but i think it's the confidence issue for them to actually be confident enough that's why they put on the glasses in okay perhaps we need to work on on that because i believe that on that day particularly especially as you're indoors you need to be able to look at your guests look at your 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 wife to be look at the family and it just sort of spoils things so um anyway thank you for answering that so we're going to wrap up here groom can look into like your his family or not necessarily the families i think it's the the fact that it can be overwhelming and they try to wow. avoid they, 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 they tend to have cold feet when they see so many people and that's what they're trying to avoid what they but say help them by taking it off at some point during the event like when when when, we, when they come in now when they're on the straight line we ask the groom could you please take off your glassy so that we can know yes because we, we need to see your eyes great thank you thank you so much this has been great and I'm, i can almost see us doing another one on on you know and, and, and sort of enlightening people a little bit more and expanding on this so if people want to use your services or follow you where can they find you on on online um i'm on instagram and um, um, i'm on youtube um, please I'm give not... your handles please <laughs> yeah I, I would I, i'm on instagram and I'm, I'm on youtube i'm on where am i again I, I, i've just recently joined tiktok um, uh, so you find me on Instagram as the fabulous D F um, A B U L O U S S, and same as on TikTok. I've just recently joined. I'm not on Facebook. I'm on YouTube, and I think Instagram is my best place to actually find me. You can DM me to find out about my services. I don't have a phone number on Instagram because I get nuisance calls on Instagram. <laughs> so I put my phone number there. I have an email address. You can get me through my email fabulous events at um ultimate.com that's my email address so you can dm me i would definitely respond 
Well, thank you everyone for joining. Um, if you have any questions, please um, don't hesitate to contact me or contact um, Busola uh, as she's given you her, in, um, her information. I'm Laura Kano. My account is Polished Manners and I'm all about etiquette and polished manners. So if you're interested in polishing up yourself a, li a little bit, then please follow me on Polished Manners as well. And I'm hoping that we will be back on with additional topics relating to African weddings in particular. And we may well be looking into other countries as well. So thank you everyone for, for joining and have a great evening. Thank you everyone for joining. I appreciate you. I appreciate all my friends and family. Thank you for coming.